Hey, are you a miracle golfer or do you want to be a consistent golfer like Mo Norman? Today I'm going to talk about shaping shots and why I think that might be a complete waste of time. This conversation has to start with, the, this is a game of spin. So as you know, ball striking is really about compressing a golf ball with the proper path of the golf club, the proper face angle of the golf club to produce the proper backspin, which allows the ball to go straight. So when I get in the conversation about how to shape golf shots, the very first thing I always tell people is, why are you shaping golf shots? <laughs> because if you walked into any of the best players I know, which are a lot of really great players on the tour, or the guys that work here at, at Graves Golf, and any, all the good players that I know, if you ask them, in the last 10 rounds of golf that you've played, how many shots have you shaped away from your normal pattern? Which means, like I have a straight pattern is what I play golf with. How many shots in the last 10 rounds have I shaped? And I'm gonna say zero, maybe one or two. If you ask the best players I know, how many shots do you shape away from your pattern? They're gonna say none, one or two, very few. But it's, it, what's interesting about hitting curvature and shaping shots is that the amateur golfers, the higher handicap players, it seems to be one of their first questions, like it's an important thing to do when you play golf. And I want to say right now that shaping a golf shot away from a straight line pattern is not the way to play golf. And I just want to make that clear. Matter of fact, I wish I could end this video right now and say don't shape shots, hit it dead straight, and go play the game, and you'll play it at a very high level, at the highest level possible. It is not required to shape golf shots to play great golf. As a matter of fact, it overcomplicates the game in many aspects. So I just want to make that point clear is that shot shaping, you see tour players do it, but you know, it's a highlight reel and guys hit these crazy shots and like, wow, he drew it around the corner and stuff like that. Look, 99% of the shots they hit on tour are shots that they aim at their target and hit their pattern. Now, some of the guys might have a left to right pattern or a right to left pattern, a natural pattern in their swing, which I don't agree with, but if that's what they have, that's what they're going to play. No one's out there going, okay, one left to right. Okay, one right to left. Okay, one straight. Okay, one left. They're not playing golf that way. Matter of fact, that's a, that's a rep recipe for chaos. Medina number nine. My good friend Larry Olson. Hi, Larry, if you're out there. Um, Larry and I used to play Medina quite a bit. Number nine, if you ever look at the, at the tournaments they play at Medina, it's a very large dogleg left par four. And when you look at the hole, you, you, you almost want to hit it out there and try to curve it around the corner. I mean, it just kind of feels like you just got to hook it around that corner. So, of course, you set up and you try to draw it around the tree line and get it down there. And if you can do it, man, it's fantastic. You're down there having a wedge, not iron into the green. But if you don't do it, if you hit it straight, you're right into the trees. So I watch all these guys trying to curve it, curve it, curve it, and they're either banging it in the left trees or they don't curve it in the right trees. Here's my suggestion. Instead of trying to figure out the curvature and, and match the curvature of the ball to the fairway, either Find your target line and hit it straight over the trees on the left, and that's what the guys did in the last time I watched it on the tour they played in Medina. They all hit it straight over the trees on the left, or take a three-wood out, hit it dead straight down the middle of the fairway and have a couple more clubs left into the green. My point is, is both shots I recommend there are straight. I don't recommend curving it, because anytime you add curvature, you add a variable. Anytime you add a variable, you add, you're asking for inconsistencies. Anytime you do that, you're asking for a double bogey. And that's what I, I just don't believe in curvature. I believe in consistent patterns. So having said all that, <laughs> just to get to the point of now we're talking about shaping golf shots, let's, let me just put it this way. I, if I'm going to curve a golf ball from left to right, right to left, I'm going to do it as little as possible or just enough what I needed. I'm not going to over curve my shots. So let's just talk about the dynamics of curvature. Now, I got my alignment position trainer here. And you can see that my three-wood position is right at the O in the zone. So there's my three-wood position. And this would be a perfectly straight, there's my foot position, there's right at my three-wood position. This is a perfectly um, aligned ball position and path, and I'll hit one here, for me to hit it perfectly straight, okay? So there's my straight golf shot path. All right, so that means that from this position of my body, and that ball position, I can create a path and a face angle that when I strike impact, the path is square, the face is square to that path. That's my straight shot. 
All right. So now, if you said to me, Todd, to hit a true left to right, which the ball would start left of my target and move to the target, what has to change? Well, the first thing that I like to change, and the easiest thing to change, is just change the path of the club. In other words, now I gotta get the path of the club. Instead of coming in and hitting the inside quadrant of that golf ball, I've gotta hit sort of the outside quadrant of the ball. That's gonna send the ball to the left, and the face angle being open to that path will curve, will put spin on the ball and curve it to the right. Does that make sense? So in other words, the face is square to the target but open to the path. And this is where I think people get confused because they think the, the club's gotta be open. It's square to the target but open to that, that design path of my swing. So the only question you have to answer is how do you, how do you change the path of your swing? And so that's what I wanna talk about here. Now, and I, I know I'm gonna get into some detail, but how do you change the path of your swing? Well, think of it this way. If, my, if I have this amount of tilt in my body and allows for this path, what if I had this amount of tilt? See what just happened? Now my path goes more up and across. The opposite of that was if I have too much tilt in my body, it goes more inside and out. So by a little adjustment of my tilt, and the openness of my body, so I changed how my body is tilted and how my body is arranged, I now have a path that goes to the left of my target. So my body position is where I get my path from. So now, there's one more element to this. So now it's pretty simple. I'm not changing how the club, I'm not changing my grip, never do that. I'm not changing anything of how the club is oriented to the target but I am changing how my body is oriented, which then allows me to change the path. It's really simple actually. So watch this. Now I got one more little piece of advice, which is important here. Without a ball sitting there, I'm gonna go into my orientation for a fade. So I'm gonna open my body. I'm going, look, the club's not changing, right? I'm gonna tilt my body this direction, but I'm keeping my club to the target. Now. Watch what just happened there was my body opened up to the club face. That's why my body line's more open, but the club's still at the target. All right, didn't change my grip. The only thing that's happening now though is because my tilt's gone this way, the ball position has to go a little more forward and to the inside. So now, I'm gonna walk through that with you and this is the easiest way that you can hit a fade. All you gotta do is walk in there, play the ball a little more forward in your stance, your stance is now slightly open to the target. And I'm telling you right now that I don't hit curvature when I play, but if I was, I wouldn't move it more than 10 yards. I, I don't want the ball moving more than 10 yards of curvature ever. So that's the only, that's only amount I'll ever curve it, no more than 10 yards. So I'd move the ball forward. So now the ball is forward of its position. My body lines are open and look at my tilt. See how it opened me up and now I'm, I'm more standing up. I'm not as tilted back. This allows my path now to be more up and down. And from that camera back there, you're gonna see a path instead of being on plane here where I hit it straight, it's gonna look steep. So now my body position allows the club to go up and that ball started perfectly left and curved exactly to the target. So the face, just keep in mind, the face is still at the target. That ball started just left of the green and then moved to exactly to the target. Now I know that was pretty complicated in how I explained that, but it's actually very, very easy. All you gotta do is move the ball forward. So it move, I move it forward just a little bit, just a fraction to the inside and open my feet. So now the ball feels forward and my body feels less tilted. And now what you do is swing down, swing down the orientation of your feet, but the face is still very, is to the target, which is actually open to my body lines, right? And then I can, I can fade it. That one I overfaded just a little bit started just left and went a little to right of the target range. So that's how you curve the ball left right because my path is left, the face is to the target which is open to the path. Okay, now let's hit the most difficult shot you can possibly hit with a three wood is a high draw. Why is it so difficult to hit a high draw? Well because now you're doing the exact opposite to hit curvature on this direction. So I gotta put side spin in this direction. And when you're putting curvature in side spin, you have to have a more shallow path. 
and the face is now square to that path. So now the club's closer to the ground. It's closer to the ground on this way. Well, it's closer to the ground, it's hard to have angle of approach on that golf ball. And the reason the three wood's so hard to hit, so don't even try this, but it, the three wood's so hard to hit is because now the club's on a shallow path, but the ball position has to be way forward to hit a three wood. This is a very difficult shot to hit. So I, first of all, if I'm gonna curve a three wood withdraw, I don't move it. You gotta move it back a little bit in its normal position. So I'm gonna move the ball back just about maybe an inch or inch and a half. And now that's right at iron ball position. And now I'm gonna angle my feet a little to the right, but remember the club face is still where? At the target. And now it's a little bit shallow on the inside. So now this is gonna start right and curve. And that's perfect right there, curving right back to the target. That is a eight yard draw. But it feels like this. This is what the swing feels like. It feels like this. Because <laughs> the ball's back and my arms go in and go out. So. I'm doing all these, this shaping with path of the golf club. Now, I don't recommend this. I mean, I'm, I just, just want to validate this. I, I don't recommend sitting around playing golf like, like you're trying to you know, create this whole game. It, it's really not this complicated. And people ask me questions all the time about, well, can you draw it, can you fade it? Absolutely. I can hit any curvature you want in a golf ball, high fades, low draws, low fades, high, whatever. But my question is, that is not a great way to be consistent because isn't this game about, I'd rather miss the ball straight consistently than any have a curvature on it. I just think you're really, really wasting your time if you're out there sitting here going, well, I'm gonna start curving the ball. That, and once again, I wanna just mention that it's really the higher handicap people are always asking this question because they, they, they somehow perceive the game as a game where you gotta have all this creativity in shots and you just don't have to do it. So let me just tell, quick, you, give you a quick example of, of why I might fade a shot or why I might draw a shot. The first, first reason I would fade a shot, or like today, there is about an eight to 10 mile an hour wind coming from the right here. And there's, it, you, can kind of, you can kind of see the flags blowing here and it's a little heavy on this side. The only thing I might do <laughs> is just put the ball slightly forward and give me a, just a little bit of angle into that wind with, with curvature. Now keep in mind that anytime you're fighting the wind like this, I'm gonna lose distance, so I'm not gonna hit it as far. So like on this one, I might just put the ball slightly forward and give myself just a tiny bit, and I hit that exactly perfect. That had five yards of fade on it, and it went from left side of the green, held itself into that wind, and went straight down at the flag. That's about the most I will ever I don't do it, but that's what I would do if I had to do any of that. I rarely would ever curve it left. So let me just talk about one more thing here uh, when we talk about curvature. The other way to curve a golf ball is with face angles. Now, the only reason you ever want to change face angle, what I mean by changing face angle is this, is changing how in your normal grip the face is oriented to your hands. In other words, that face is closed to my hand position. That's a normal hand position, that's a closed face. But here's the problem with that, is that very much affects directional, uh, coming off the, the direction of the ball of the face, and it also really affects curvature. So lofting, direction, and curvature. If you're ever gonna use a face angle adjustment, it would probably, only reason you'd ever do that is if you hit it into the trees and you gotta hit some crazy hook around something, get out of the trees. But I'm gonna give you another piece of advice. I'm gonna grab a, a shorter club here. Let's just say you hit it in the trees. And now you're thinking, well, I'm gonna take this ball and I'm gonna be like Bubba Watson and I'm gonna hook it around the trees and get it on the green. Go for it. And after you've banged it through the trees and your scoring average is about five over par, I want you to do me a favor chip it out into the fairway. Just chip it right back in the fairway and then knock it on the green and two putt from there. And then I want you to add up your scoring average and you tell me whether chipping the ball out or trying to be bubble watching gives you the best scoring average. And, and I'll pay you money if your miracle golf shot scoring average is better than your chipping it out average. This is a game of percentages and consistency. And I wanna give all the credit to this to my college golf coach, Greg Grost, because I want to tell you what happened to me. 
I was playing competitive golf in college. We're playing in a qualifier down in, in uh, we were down in Fort Worth, Texas. We're playing at Colonial, I believe it's Colonial. And I bang, I hit one in the trees. And I see this nice little gap in this hole in the trees. Coach is watching. I get up there and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it right through that little hole. So I got my six iron out and I try to hit this little punch like this. And sure enough, I hit a good shot right into the tree, goes behind me, now, now I'm worse. Now I'm deeper into the crap, right? So I go back there and now I'm going, what do I do? So now I chip out and whatever, make my double bogey. Walking off the course that day, coach puts his arm around me, he said, Todd, he goes, one thing you're gonna, I'm gonna do for you here while you're a player at this university, I'm gonna teach you how not to be a miracle golfer. And you don't have to perform miracles out here. This isn't about miracles, this is about scoring averages and consistency. He goes, so from now on, when you knock it in the trees, I want you to hit it right back in the fairway and I want you to watch your scoring average. And here's what happened. I would hit it in the trees and I wanted so badly to punch it through that hole again. I would see these holes, but I can do it, I can do it, right? And I probably could have pulled it off one out of every 10 times. But I went, coach, I'll do it for you. And I would knock it back in the fairway and all of a sudden I found I was hitting on the green and making the putt. I was making pars from the trees. I started to make, my scoring average was a half a shot over par when I hit it in the trees. So I'm a half a shot over par versus the, the chance of making double. My scoring average improved by at least a half a shot or almost a shot and a half on every single time I didn't hit the fairway. So I'm just telling you right now, this miracle golf crap that people talk about, this is a game of consistency and not a game of miracles. So final recommendation for you as we wrap this up. I want you to spend your time on building a great golf swing that hits a straight shot pattern. All right, so when you build this swing that when you set up that you can hit a golf shot, this is a seven iron, nice single plane address and a nice perfectly straight, no side spin, exactly where I'm aiming golf shot. It's exactly how I play golf. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Don't forget, if you wanna see more of these videos about the single plane swing, don't forget to subscribe, hit that subscribe button the little bell icon, and don't forget to like the video. Thanks for joining me. You can see more videos like this inside of our Single Plane Academy Gold Membership. Also included in the Gold Membership are our 90-day customized plans for guaranteed improvement, personalized video instruction with our master coaches, and also access to our entire digital library with all of our instructional content. Don't forget to subscribe. Look in the description below for more information. We hope to see you inside of the Single Plane Academy Gold Membership.